So you're using this video because you've done your eight analysis questions of the geologic column and you're ready to see how you did and get a deeper understanding of it. And so what I have for you here on this slide is how the completed geologic column should look. And so if you notice what I've done, I've really matched um, rock layers across rows. And so you can see this rock at the bottom is the metamorphic rock nice. And it's kind of tough on the computer, I know, but I tried to line those up perfectly. And then we see this layer of coal that is in all three rock outcrops. And then you might be wondering, well, how did I know like where to put um, these three layers of silt? And what I did is I tried, this was not perfect, let me do that a little better, to line up the um, top of the coal, right? But then we had an unconformity here in rock outcrop two, and we can answer the question of what used to be there by looking across the way that that was just more silt film that was removed. But I also um, matched up the tops here. Now in outcrop two, we had a full layer of limestone, which was helpful to fill in this gap and also some of this unconformity. Remember, unconformity is a gap. And then you can see that this one had um, the whole limestone layer at the top eroded away. So that's how it should have looked when you were moving and matching up um, to fill those unconformities. Now let's look at the questions. So if we look at how many total rock layers, there are six, and there are definitely some repeats, but here's how it goes. You can see the oldest on the bottom is um, nice. I know it's spelled with a G, but you pronounce it nice then coal, then siltstone, then limestone, then another layer of siltstone, then another layer of limestone for six total. And then we said definitely the oldest on the bottom according to relative dating principle of superposition is nice in limestone, the top layer of limestone here, not the one that's more towards the middle of the sequence would be the youngest. So again, nice and limestone are your answers for two and three. Now we get to this question. How do we know that the two layers of limestone, and this is question four, by the way, how do we know that the two layers of limestone were actually laid down and formed at different times in Earth's history? Well, the first thing I notice, did you notice that there is an X going into here, which is a fossil, right? But down here, you have this thing that looks like this bird's foot. So the fossil evidence is different. And the other way that you know is that there are different, that should say, different locations in the rock outcropping. So if they're, they're definitely not at the same spot, so they couldn't have been laid down at the same time. And now questions five and six. These, I thought this was uh, probably the toughest set of questions here. It says that gneiss is a metamorphic rock. How do metamorphic rocks form? So this is a review from our first unit. Meta means change and morph means form. So they always change form from another rock, but by heat and pressure. Now this was, I think, the real tough one. So what could be happening? You had to notice the word underneath the gneiss to create these conditions. And I actually found a good diagram of it. Do you remember when you guys were um, working with salt dough or clay at home and you were um, making green pancakes and yellow pancakes and spheres that were representing different kinds of sedimentary rocks that were laid down. And finally, at the end, metamorphism occurred when magma was rising up under your layers of sedimentary rock from your ancient, ancient lake bed. So in our sequence here, it is pretty weird to have a metamorphic rock down there, but here's what probably has caused it. There would have been a magma pocket underneath and contact metamorphism is by heat that would have changed its form. And so that's how you could get a metamorphic rock as an oldest rock in the sequence. And then to finish up, um, I asked you about the fossils that you see here, that there were two different ones, one that looked like an X and one like a chicken's footprint. And I asked you, are they index fossils? And you should have marked no. Now let me show you why. You notice how the X expands in three layers here, the bird's foot into two layers. An index fossil is on earth only for a short time. And we have to keep in mind that sedimentary layers are laid down at the bottoms of lakes and oceans, and it takes a long time for earth to deposit a thick layer. So an index fossil, and here's what you wanna check, an index fossil, instead of being in multiple layers, will generally just be in one. Okay, so here it is again, 
Index fossils were under the short time. These fossils, the X and the chicken looking foot, were in multiple layers, and that means they were unearthed for a longer time. So definitely not index fossils.